and I found that in US <laughs> it, uh, about one lakh twenty thousand colostomies are performed per year. End colostomies are performed per, per year. The complications related to a colostomy can be divided into early and late. And uh, this paper is concerned with one of the late complications associated with a colostomy. The most common one is a parastomal hernia peritoneal for preventing parastomal hernia, a systematic urine meta-analysis. Research shows different techniques of stoma formation in transperitoneal route only, and some studies investigate the role of placement in all patients, including those who may not develop parastomal hernia later. Some incomplete meta-analysis exists, but literature search, including limited databases or only laparoscopic methods, have been focused on. Hence, there is a need for a review of transperitoneal versus extraperitoneal method for colostomy in laparoscopic versus open method and comparing stomal hernia with the operating time. Meta-analysis, what is a meta-analysis? Meta-analysis quantitatively combines the results of different smaller studies. Uh, Dr. Shobna, will, shall we stop here? Because uh, yes, it's better to have a discussion in between the individual sections. So Definitely, sir. Yeah. So before we go on to this uh, discussion, overall, I just wanted to tell everyone that the format of a, of a systematic review and meta-analysis as far as writing is concerned, is totally different from a write from a format of an original article. So okay. here we see the titles also. It will always mention systematic review and meta analysis of the topic, what you have presented. <coughs> and uh, primarily, when we talk of uh, when we talk of systematic review, that means when it compares to a conventional review, we always have a research question here. And the research question is what you already mentioned in the, in the last line of your slide, okay, of introduction, that they would like to find out uh, the difference between extraperitoneal versus transperitoneal colostomy, which of them is better, with the primary outcome of uh, parastomal hernia. And the reason they have given is parastomal hernia is definitely what you presented has got a high incidence and that is why they wanted to look at it and why this meta-analysis was done so if you have to look at that point the reason is you already mentioned that uh, there is a deficiency as far as uh, considering all the factors is concerned although there are two meta-analysis they themselves have quoted but they said that there were some deficiencies in those and they would like to cover through this meta-analysis so i think then uh, we'll go forward to materials and methods. Yeah. yeah, you can please proceed. Yeah. Yes, sir. Meta-analysis quantitatively, quantitatively combines the results of studies. It can detect net benefit even if in the International Perspective Register of Systematic Reviews database. Prisma and Moose guidelines were followed. databases in systematic reading transperitoneal versus extraperitoneal colostomy were included there was no limit in the date of publication and studies were evaluated by two independent researchers and only english articles were included search strategy um, what it actually lacks is no hand picked journals from the library library and there are no efforts to trace unpublished articles um, and there are no articles in languages other than English that were included. So should I proceed? Uh, yeah, would you like to highlight some things as far as the methodology is concerned, how this is different from a conventional original article because this slide has a lot of material on that. Sir, so large databases were searched and uh, all the previous studies, irrespective of the time limit, all of them were included as long as they yes, compared. Yes, yes. And then uh, they had mentioned that two researchers independently conducted this to get all the information. Yes, that is what is important that here, basically. One more thing, what they have particularly mentioned here, which is a little unusual, is that they have clearly stated that there is no time frame. 
Otherwise, whenever we do a meta analysis, we'll give a time frame that we have searched the articles in last five years, last ten years. So, any reason do you think that there is no time frame in this they have given? Probably there were very less number of uh, articles published on this comparative comparison between transperitoneal versus extraperitoneal roots. So, if they made a time frame, then they wouldn't have anything to choose. Yeah. Okay. They will have, but uh, the number would be less. And definitely, what you said is correct. Yeah. Maybe the articles were limited, and they thought that there is no harm in actually going back to all the articles which are published in the literature. Yes. Definitely. I think you can proceed. And uh, do you uh, can you expand on what is Prisma because that is what is commonly actually used for uh, systematic review and meta analysis. That's the most common thing. What they have given primarily they have used Moose and Prisma. So what is Prisma? Where it is used commonly, and what is Moose? The Moose, I don't, uh, I don't, I have not read up. But Prisma, sir, I have actually included the flow chart. Uh, where no, I wanted the. They have already given the expansion. Can you expand on that and then tell what is it basically? Prisma is like consort. When we talk of consort for randomized controlled trials, so equivalent of equivalent of consort and randomized controlled trials in a systematic review and meta analysis, it is Prisma. So Prisma is basically preferred reporting items in systematic review and meta analysis. That's the expansion of Prisma. And Moose, they have already given the expansion. You can see that meta analysis of observational studies in epidemiology. So that is Moose. So Prisma commonly is used for randomized controlled trials. When you do a systematic review and meta analysis for, for RCTs, we use Prisma. So they have used few RCTs, and most of the studies are observational studies in this particular in this particular uh, uh, publication. So that is why they have used both. So you have to use both the guidelines. They have used to Prisma and Moose. It's very important that you have to have a flow chart, whether you're writing a meta-analysis or whether you're writing a randomized controlled trial, that's mandatory. So mm -hmm. that is why Prisma flow chart has to come. And these people also have given a Prisma flow chart. Okay. So please proceed. Yeah. Yes. Study quality is determined by the Oxford level of evidence-based medicine by the Cochrane risk of bias and the Newcastle Ottawa scale for non-randomized studies. So it's, this I'm not very clear about statistical heterogeneity. So I've just put a question mark in left. So should I proceed or? Yeah, you please proceed. I wanted to uh, mention those criteria. I think you must have put that in the slide. Okay. Must be in the next slide probably. Yeah. This is one. Yeah. So, so that will answer your rotated. previous slides question. Yeah. Uh, okay. Following undergoing colorectal surgery with the end colostomy. Interventions included extraperitoneal colostomy or transperitoneal colostomy, and outcome measure included parastomal hernia. Secondary outcome measures included stromal prolapse, stromal necrosis, and operating time. Discrepancies in inclusions were resolved by discussion between the reviewers and the senior author. Yes. The, uh, yes. Any particular reason why they have included like that? Because whenever they include studies, they will yes, have sir. certain criteria and they will give it. So what is the reason they have put this criteria and what's the advantage of these criteria? What is the advantage and what is the disadvantage of this? Uh, they have restricted the population yes. by they have restricted the population by giving this criteria about whom they are going to observe okay basically the advantage of this is major advantage what you asked in the previous slide to reduce the heterogeneity so if you combine studies and you produce the outcome from that and the studies are very much heterogeneous then you cannot rely upon the outcome. So if you are including the studies, then the studies have to be as homogeneous as possible. So if you have relatively good criteria for inclusion, okay, you can say certain strict criteria for inclusion, then automatically the heterogeneity, heterogeneity will, is, will come down. Yeah. So that is what they have particularly used. And later on, you will use one term called as random effects model. I will tell a little bit about that later. So that is what they have used. So these 
if you look at these criteria, these are the points they are looking for in all the studies. Okay, so the patients have to have an colostomy. They have compared extraperitoneal versus transperitoneal. Their primary outcome is parastomal hernia. And these are the secondary outcome measures, stoma prolapse, necrosis, and operating time. This is the principal uh, outcome of the study. And based on this, they have done the inclusion. So if you have reasonably good inclusion criteria, which are very clear, and you get adequate number of studies for inclusion, then you can have a very good outcome from that sort of meta-analysis. That is what I just wanted to highlight. Okay, please okay. proceed. This is the sum results summary of risk of bias. Um, so this table, I could not understand what the. I, this is just a, this is a marking. Okay, if actually it's not fully visible. So this is what wherever information is mentioned, they have reduced. They have mentioned. Usually there is something called as funnel plot. They do. Or this is what they have charted out to find out the bias. If a study has a lot of bias, then naturally the value from the study comes down. If the study has less bias, then the value of the study increases. So there is something called as a weight to the study which is given. So we'll see later on in the forest plot when you put yes. that thing. So all that thing is dependent upon the risk of bias. So you can see that. Bias means what basically if random sequence generation is done properly, then they will give a green thing. If it is not done properly, they will not mention, they will not give. Not done properly, they'll put a negative. Allocation okay. concealment, if it has been done properly, then they'll put a green plus. So that is how actually oh. assessment is done. For each yeah. study, there will be particular points. Those things have to be entered into a software to actually generate the forest part. Forest part only gives the outcome in a meta-analysis. So that is what is there. We'll see it a little later. We can okay, skip sir. this and proceed first. Yeah. Okay. Sir. Yeah. Parastomal hernia, the result first thing that they measured as the outcome was parastomal hernia. Total 1048 patients were included. Uh, Some... just, just a second. I'll just interrupt you there. They use something which is very good. Newcastle Ottawa scale. Uh, have you mentioned about it or... It's going sir, to come later slides. Sir, I have because written we have not the finished the methodology yet. Because forest part is results. So we have yes, to go yes. to statistical analysis also. So uh, we have sir, used that scale. Have you seen that? Here I have just written. Sir. That's yeah, you have written that. Newcastle Ottawa scale. So whenever they give uh, these points, it is we can see it's a very nice scale. Newcastle is from Australia and Ottawa is from Canada. And this is based on the quality of the observational studies. So good quality, fair quality, poor quality, all this is dependent on the scale. And this all, the whole scale depends upon that whether the representatives of the expert, of the exposed cohort have been taken, whether they have uh, comparability. So all those things are given. And if the scale is giving high score, that is an indication that these non-randomized studies have good quality for inclusion. So that is what they have used it. So people who are interested, they can actually look for this uh, uh, this Newcastle Ottawa scale, and it's an interesting scale, and quite a commonly followed scale nowadays for the assessment of non of non randomized studies. Okay, and then one of the other points they have used is something called as random effects model, which if you show the forest plot, it is mentioned there. So, yeah, can you show before the forest plot? Actually, you should show the uh, prisma. Chart. No, you already no, have it. No? Is it not? Yeah, that is what you have not. Yeah, you can just slide it so that people can see the prisma chart. Sir, so this is. So yeah. this one. Yes. Yeah, yeah. This is what is prisma. You can see there lower down. It's written preferred reporting items of systematic reviews and meta analysis. Yeah. Like a consort chart in uh, randomized control trials, you have to have a prisma chart in this. Now, any deficiency you feel that there is there in this uh, prisma chart? So they have the only thing I could find was that they have not in that though in the article they have mentioned the reasons for the first level of exclusion after identification, but in the flow chart they have not mentioned why they have uh, removed. They have written yeah. records Excellent. excluded. That is very good what you have pointed out. If you see here, three eighty two are actually 
deleted, is it not? So they yes. have to give why those three eighty two in short were deleted. That was that is what I thought was missing in this. All right, please proceed. Yes. Peristomal hernia was the first outcome that was measured. One zero four eight patients were included from ten studies. Transperito extra peritoneal colostomy. Uh, patients who had who developed a peristomal hernia in patients with extra peritoneal colostomy that was 22 out of 347 patients and trans peritoneal colostomy 125 patients out of 701 developed the peristomal hernia this came out to a percentage of 6.3% for extra peritoneal and 17.8% for trans peritoneal this is the forest plot for the yeah As actually we course. had a discussion on forest spot some time back and i thought uh, this is the correct uh, place because we are discussing metanalysis so can you discuss one they have put three forest spots so one of them this is the main one used for the yes. primary outcome so can you discuss this little bit in detail like all the components uh, of the forest spot the, then it will be this, useful to understand it for a uh, uh, the risk ratio, yes, sir. Yeah. No, it's okay. If you have difficulty, I will explain. No problem. Because uh, in a meta-analysis, unless and until the forest plot is understood, the ratio then is actually not, the... we will not understand the uh, interpretation of a meta-analysis. Is it not? So, yeah, you, you please tell whatever is possible from your side, then I will tell. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. The um, the uh, the uh, red dot actually tells the sir. I don't know. I won't be able to explain it. I was able to understand it myself, but I will not be able to explain. Yeah. Okay. I will tell. Okay, this uh, basically this forest plot what you have put here. So a few important points we have to look in this forest plot. Okay, uh, the first is that uh, we look at the studies. I don't know whether my cursor would not be seen. I think because you are sharing the slide. Uh, how do we do it, Doctor Bhavin? Shall I open or what? But I, so I can stop I, I sharing. No, no, yeah. but if you stop sharing, then I have to open the file. Okay, so uh, yeah, I can open the file and show. I think, yeah, if you stop sharing, I will open the file and show. That will be better so that everybody understands yes. exactly. I will try whether it should work. Yeah. So. How to share the screen. Yeah, is it uh, visible, the screen? Yes, sir, it is visible, it is visible. It's visible, okay. So in short, I will just tell about the forest spot. I've done some markings also there. So first is, if all of you can look at it, is it visible clearly? Yeah. So if you look at this point here, I will highlight it. Yes, sir. See, no time limit has been set, okay? That is why all studies are included. Otherwise, you see, in a forest plot, you cannot include studies which are published in 74, 75. So this is something which is unusual for this meta-analysis. But some of the meta-analysis will not have a cutoff time. So these are the studies, 10 studies, which have been included in the meta-analysis. And as we discussed last time, this is the weight given to the studies. And we can see some of the studies, the weight is more as compared to the other studies. As far as this, this whole forest plot is for a single outcome, and that is what is parastomal hernia results. And when we talk of mantle hansel random effects model, it means that there will be always an effect size for each study. Effect size means the difference between the intervention and the control. So when we presume that the effect size is different in all the studies, like the effect may, might be 5% here, 6% here, 7%, again 5%, 4%. 
then it is called as random effects model if you presume that the effect size is common across all the studies and there is no difference within the studies then we use a fixed effects model now it's not very easy to under, uh, explain this anybody who is interested can read about random effects model and the fixed effects model i will just show the definition also of that little uh, later so if you look at the forest plot this depiction what we are seeing here is the same as in the picture here so if you look at uh, the first study the first study this is the point okay this indicates 0.24 and this is the risk ratio 0.24 risk ratio means that when we do extra peritoneal repair the chances of parastomal hernia come down by almost 80% so that is what it means by that but because the line here is crossing the neutral line in a risk ratio the neutral line is 1 so because the confidence interval is crossing the neutral line it indicates that technically there is no effect and the p value will not be significant so there are many studies which are actually crossing the neutral line but there are some studies okay this has got a heavier weight this definitely is not touching the neutral line and most of the studies are lying very much on the left side so what is the average of all these studies if you see the average of all these studies this will give the average the total 95% confidence interval 100% so this is overall result of the forest plot which is shown here so this is what is there so if this is the overall result of forest plot what is the total result so this value this height of this diamond is 0.36 and the width of the diamond this point is 0.21 to 0.62 so if you look at the average this is 0.36 the whole effect of this is 0.36 that means parastomal hernia risk reduction occurs by 100 minus 36 so that is 64% by doing an extra peritoneal repair see favors extra peritoneal favors trans peritoneal so that is the summation of this whole forest plot and if you see this this is the summation and the statistics for that is given here if you see the statistics here it is chi square is 12.08 with the degrees of freedom is 9 this is called as q statistics if i clear click here i think that should come q statistic shows the chi square distribution and the degrees of freedom and the i square statistic shows the it shows 26% that means the homogeneity of all the studies is excellent as i told last time if it is close to 25 it is excellent absolutely heterogeneity is not there if it is 50% it is moderate 75% is high and 100% is of course very heterogeneous studies if the studies are heterogeneous then we should not believe this result but because all the i square is 26% it is homogeneous studies so the result of this we have to believe and if you see the this is the statistics the p value for this result and the p value is 0.002 indicates that extra peritoneal repair reduces substantially the effect of parastomal hernia falling and colostomy and that is what we see from this forest plot so these are the points i have mentioned here this is about a point this is this is the distribution i have already told and this is about uh, the no no time limit so these are the stickers i have put there so anybody would like to ask any question at this point of time i'll be happy to answer because the prime aim of presenting a meta analysis is that you should be able to understand the forest plot completely without understanding the forest plot you cannot actually understand the meta analysis meta analysis at all so that is what actually it means by that and i will also show what is random effects model so that the uh, people who are interested can read should i have marked it somewhere and this is what is see this is what it means under the random effects model we allow the true effect sizes to differ it is possible that all studies share a common effect size but it is also possible that the effect size varies from study to study so large studies will lose influence here and small studies will gain influence that is what is the use of a forest plot with a random effects model so if you see most of the forest plots will use random effects model only they will because you cannot have see all studies will have variations so we cannot presume that all studies are very identical to each other and uh, uh, and their effect size is same 
but ideal circumstances you should use fixed fx model okay ideal circumstances when you use the different studies the presumption should be such that all studies are done in an identical manner for identical outcomes that is theoretically not possible that is why you have to use a, a random fx but if you find that the studies are very close to each other okay multiple studies done in the same population in those circumstances a fixed fx plot can be used so naturally the value of fixed fx plot is always uh, higher as compared to random fx model fixed fx model is always superior to random fx model but overall it is not possible to get a fixed fx model in most of the forest plot so most of the forest plot will use this random fx model and Han mantle hansel is one of the types of uh, random fx model the details we don't have to go this is basically all dependent on statistical software but as a clinician if if anybody cannot read the forest plot then you cannot understand the meta analysis so sir, any question sir, sir can i can i yeah. can i add just one point sure sure please I I just want to add that there are two p values here. One is p value of point two one, and another is p value of zero point zero zero two. I am speaking from a personal experience from initial days. I used to consider that heterogeneity p value as a total effect p value. That is not so. And uh, p value in case of heterogeneity statistics, non-significance is a good sign. The studies are not so heterogeneous. As well as in Absolute. effect size, Absolute. the p value is uh, giving us the total result, isn't it, sir? Because in, in Absolute. my uh, initial days, I used to do this mistake. No, no, this definitely this p value should always be non-significant because this 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 is talking of heterogeneity. So when we say the null hypothesis, we presume we presume that both the studies are homogeneous. So we have to disprove that. I mean, we have to prove that. So what happens is if we find the p value is not significant we accept the null hypothesis that means we accept that all the studies are homogeneous so because the p value is not significant here we have accepted this and you see there are two ways of uh, measuring this one is the q statistics and the q statistics will give the chi square value and the p value and the i square statistics which will give the percentage now commonly people talk about i square which is easy to understand 25% 50% 75% but if you talk in p value terms if this is significant then you will find the i will be more than 50 so just to explain that i will show the next forest plot okay dr shobhna i'll just mention the last forest plot for some time before we go to it if you see this uh, is the last forest a, plot yeah you can see the how to decide weight for yeah. particular study now yeah so oh no yeah I, i'll i'll tell about that okay so uh let me see now here it is point it is 50% i think one of the things was high okay mm, no this is 0% so if you look at uh, this p value okay this is also all the three p values are not significant so since all the three p values are not significant overall the data is homogeneous only and here only the i square is 50% other places the i square is uh, it is actually very low whenever the i square is low definitely in those circumstances the thing is uh, it is indicative of homogeneous studies and homogeneous studies are very good for meta analysis that is what now why the studies are homogeneous in particularly in this particular study is in this particular publication is because they have put very stringent inclusion criteria that they should have this primary outcome this secondary outcome once you put like that that's an excellent way of selecting the studies and only thing what they have done is they have widened the net they have taken for the last 50 years or 40 years whatever it is so once you take it for 30 40 years you, they have got enough studies to carry out a meta analysis see meta analysis can be carried out with four studies also meta analysis can be carried out with 15 20 studies also see people don't take 30 40 studies the more studies you take it will become heterogeneous so that is why the standard number is usually a good number is around 10 little more than 10 or little less than 10 so that is what is the thing yeah what is the question you said uh, that question is i think that's a statistical question how the weight is decided i just now told yes. it depends on the this picture what they have shown okay this is the picture which decides the weight uh, yeah this one okay now if you look at this picture this one is it visible all of you can see that what is what actually dr shobhna has shown so this indicates how much bias is there in each study you see these are the different studies given so if you have random sequence generation bias 
if you have allocation concealment bias if you have blinding bias naturally the weight of the study will come down if you have a huge number of patients in general in general the weight of the study will go up and if you have a fixed effects model in fixed effect model the number of patient in each study you can see the number of patients were given here okay so this is the number of patients so if you see the total number of patients actually decides the weight random effects model also the total number of patients decide the weight but even smaller studies can have smaller studies can also have a good weight so that is what i have put in the in the random effects description if you see here where it, uh, yeah i'll just click this again so all of you can see is it visible see this is what is written there under the random effects model we allow the true size and all that is possible and then large studies lose influence while small studies gain influence that is the weight when we talk of influence it means the weight of the study so it is a statistical calculation and it depends on many factors including the bias which will give the weight but the weight of the study decides the overall outcome because overall outcome is here so this 100% will be decided by the weight of each of these studies if one of the studies has got a weight of say 80% and it is lying on the right side then this this diamond will shift on the right side so that is what the the movement of the diamond is controlled by the overall effect of the studies so we can see here this is a this is this has got a good weight it is neutral value this has got a good weight on the left side and this is what a good weight very much on the left side so overall the diamond is to the left side so that is what is the thing any other question anybody would like to ask before i hand it over this thing to any other question or it can be asked later on also i think dr shobhna you can continue i'm stopping the share so that you can open your this you can open your powerpoint So should I continue? Yeah, yeah, please continue. Yeah, yeah, you can you share. Can, your if you can share the PowerPoint and if you can show the figure yes, three, okay, I will just tell one point, then you can continue because there it has got a study which has got a huge weight. Okay. डॉक्टर शोभना आर यू देयर यस सर यस सर हेलो या आर यू एबल टू शेयर द पावर पॉइंट अच्छा सर आई थॉट द फिगर 3 यू आर सेइंग वाज ऑन योर स्क्रीन नो आई यू कैन शेयर योर स्क्रीन वी आर वेटिंग फॉर दैट ओ अच्छा अच्छा ओके सर स्टडी टेकर स्टडी यू कैन सी दिस इज 
such a huge weight compared to the other studies and primarily it depends on numbers but number is number only does not decide the weight if you see the number here is 89 weight is 68 percent here number is 62 percent 62 is the number not very much less compared to this weight is just 16 percent so it is not exclusively the number which decides the weight there are other parameters in a study especially in general you can see a properly done study with less bias will always have with adequate number will have a good weight so that is the summation for that answer it's a difficult to, way to find out exactly how weight this which is all this nobody gives the weight the software gives the weight so when you feed all the data of the study you get the output from that but this is highlighted from this and this is very clearly visible that you can see there most of the studies there is something called as eyeball test also when we do an eyeball test uh, can you show the first figure figure one yes sir now if you do the eyeball test this is called the eyeball test you run your eyeball over the confidence intervals of all the studies and if the eyeball runs smoothly like that if i if i run the eyeball like that down okay that indicates that the studies are homogeneous if if the eyeball runs like this that means one study is on this side Uh, no don't move it yeah okay. yeah just take it up yeah if the eyeball suppose this study is having a line here so the eyeball moves here then comes here then goes there then goes there then goes there definitely it's a heterogeneous study that meta analysis we should not believe the results we should not give emphasis we should not give importance to the results whatever is the p value we are getting from them usually in those studies you'll find the i square will be 75% and whatever we get the result here it will not be in general when you have a, like this half of the confidence intervals on this side half on this side the natural the diamond will also fall in the neutral value most of the times it will happen like that but suppose if it does not fall in the neutral value and you get a value which is showing a p value which is significant the results have to be taken with a pinch of salt so the primary aim of presentation of this particular meta analysis to understand this forest plot very very clearly if any yeah some questions are there let me see what are the questions uh, which you have explained uh, no actually uh, i have not read any books see wherever i have a difficulty everything is given on the net okay manzel handle whatever i have mentioned whatever points i have actually put in the sticky notes all are from the net all are from the net in the same figure second study does not have any weights still included uh, which one in the same figure study no it's not like it does not have any weight it has got less weight once you include the study whether it has less weight or more weight it is used for calculation it is not that you decide the weight and then use the study we take include the study and then calculate the weight it's the other way now so once you include it every study will have some some degree of see this is this study number 2 study has got a 6.4 degree uh, percentage of weight there are studies which have got only 3.1 percentage see once you decide the inclusion criteria and if it is fitting into the inclusion criteria you are supposed to include the set irrespective of the weight the weight will get calculated automatically that is how it is uh, please proceed uh, dr shobha with your yes, sir. continue yeah. stomal sir this is stomal necrosis was the third outcome that was assessed 59 patients were included and uh, no if you want you can mention you can describe the other ones also other other yeah. figures also the previous ones i have just put uh, some i just told the forest spot you can decide because we have not discussed the results of other parameters no okay so you can go to your previous slide and this you start with your results yes sir yeah so this is the first slide of my results yeah yeah Parastomal hernia was the first outcome that was measured. One zero four eight patients were included. Twenty two patients out of those who had extra peritoneal colostomy developed parastomal hernia. Whereas in the trans peritoneal colostomy group, one twenty five patients developed parastomal hernia. That amounted to a percentage of seventy point eight percent and six point three percent for those having an extra peritoneal colostomy. The relative risk was zero point three six, and I square was twenty six percent. P P value was less than zero point zero zero one. 
for stomal prolapse, 437 patients were included. 185 of those patients had an extraperitoneal colostomy and 179 patients had a transperitoneal colostomy. 13 patients out of those developed a, parastoma, developed a stomal prolapse and two patients out of the extraperitoneal colostomy group developed a stomal prolapse. The percentage of this was 1.1% and 7.3% in the transperitoneal colostomy group. The relative risk was 0.21 and the 95% con confidence interval was 0.06 to 0.73. I square was 0% and the P value was 0 0.01. Stomal necrosis was the third outcome that was assessed. 59 patients were included. Uh, two out of the 34 patients in the extraperitoneal group developed stomal necrosis. And two out of the 25 patients in the transperitoneal colostomy group developed stomal necrosis. That amounted to a percentage of 5.9% in the extraperitoneal colostomy group and 8% in the transperitoneal colostomy group. The relative risk was 0 0.76. The 95% confidence interval was 0.04 to 14.69. I square was 50% and p-value was 0 0.86. What was the p-value here? Can you just go back? Sir, 0 0.86. Yeah. Can you just explain that why the p-value is 0 0.86 when there is a 24% reduction in the relative risk? This indicates that there is a 24% reduction in stomach necrosis. Yes. In patients who undergo with the extra peritoneal, yeah, extra peritoneal, but still the p value is not seen. Point eight is close to one only, so it is that yes, means sir. it is equal. So, can you explain why it is like that? Again, the Normally, eyeball test. Can you see the eyeball okay. test? This is what is the eyeball test I was mentioning. You see, one is this side, one is this side. The... Yeah, when you have something like that, here the diamond is falling in the center, and primarily you should. Concentrate on the confidence interval. Whenever the confidence interval crosses the value of neutral effect one, see it is yes. 0 0.04, and the yes. other side is 14. So if you if you see from 0 0.04, see 0 0.04 to 14, it will go there. So it, this is the line of neutral effect. So whenever it is crossing the line of neutral effect, then the p-value will never be significant. That means there is no difference. As far as extra peritoneal and transperitoneal uh, approach is concerned, when we talk about stomal necrosis, so it is equal on both sides. Okay, so that okay. is what it means by that. Please carry on. Yes. Operating time. It was the study on operating time was abandoned because some studies measured it as there was variation within the studies. Some studies measured it as from start to the end of the procedure, while others actually measured time for stoma formation alone. So it could not be compared. Review of all literature in the discussion review of all literature till now has been done. Prophylactic mesh placement. Another technique or comparative RCT tile is required to compare the two that is extraperitoneal versus mesh prophylactic mesh placement. Uh, the definition of parastomal hernia is unclear. There is a need for standardizing it for research purpose like physical examination plus a USG report. Uh, some of the reasons of why an extraperitoneal may fare better, they have been discussed. Uh, the downside is that the repair of parastomal hernia in an extraperitoneal stoma may be difficult. Even if this approach is used. Yeah. Is that the last one? The limitations of the study. Okay, fine. Only two RCTs, uh, only two uh, studies that were included were randomized controlled trial. The rest were retrospective studies. The study period was too long. So the uh, value that can be given to the result of this study that is a little bit uh, doubtful because there, is, there would be some ev evolution in surgical technique which could cause bias and whether the results hold true in laparoscopic method is not clear and further studies will be required for extraperitoneal colostomy open versus laparoscopic method to measure the to compare the complication rates and complications of extraperitoneal colostomy alone there are more studies required and should we implement uh, even the most dreaded complication like stoma retraction, stoma necrosis and stoma prolapse in parastomal hernia all seem manageable. None of the complications, they seem to be definitely linked to high risk of mortality. Um, 
the main question is should we wait for rct and laparoscopic method or open method comparing extra peritoneal versus trans peritoneal colostomy exclusively or should we implement an extra peritoneal colostomy as the standard of care from now so that is all yeah i think good to, overall this is a very tough paper to present and you have managed it very well Thank and uh, if any questions are there then i think you can take it and part of it i can also take anybody will try to ask any queries there are certain points i would like to show in uh, i think you can stop the screen share i will show okay sir okay sir uh Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. If I come to the discussion, there are certain points which should not be done, written in the discussion which the authors have written. that is not relevant particularly actually this has got published in a very good journal dcr is the leading journal disease of colon rectum for colorectal surgery that's one of the number one journals in the world for colorectal surgery it is the official journal of the uh, colon rectal surgeons of the us but if you see here uh, this is what to click on that for it to go I don't know why that box is not going. Okay. Uh, now, uh, if you concentrate on this portion of the, this is coming. Okay, let's. Yeah, this portion. Now, if I see, if you say this portion, uh, see they have mentioned this is a part of discussion. They have mentioned uh, my screen is visible, Doctor Bhavi. It's visible. Yes, no? sir. Yes, sir. It yeah. is visible. So you can see here with transperitoneal colostomy, rises uh, rise in intraabdominal pressure may cause intraabdominal contents to be forced laterally to the colostomy. When the pressure rises in the extraperitoneal colostomy, the higher pressure pushes the pushes the sigmoid lateral to the stoma and all that thing. See, whenever we write any discussion. whenever we write any results first thing the reviewer will see is whether everything is based on the present study you cannot talk about anything which is not mentioned in the present study which you have not got it from the present study so these points which the authors have mentioned nothing of this sort has been tested in the present study so they cannot write about this in the discussion that is number one number two if you look here okay if you look they have mentioned about recent literature suggests benefits of the use of prophylactic biological or synthetic measures all right in the discussion for completion sake you can add it but again in this particular study there is there is absolutely no relevance of placing a mesh because the study is not based on that so in introduction if you mention one or two line that people use mesh nowadays for the prevention of parastomal hernia that is fine but in discussion that point should not come because discussion should be based on what you have found what others have found what you have found how it is similar to others and what you have found how it is dissimilar to so this is the point i just wanted to tell and uh, here this is lacuna pointed out actually they have put it as limitations but actually these are the good points if you see the articles included are not always clear on this matter four articles have no description of diagnosis and all this is very good on the part of uh, authors to mention the lacune of the studies which they have included and i don't think the first one is this, uh, is uh, a bias they have included into the limitations the possibility of bias and heterogeneity between studies the meta analysis ideally consists of actually most of the forest plots what they use has got practically no heterogeneity if you see forest plot number 3 if you see here i square is 50 the next actually one has got zero so i square is zero means there is absolutely no heterogeneity so their inclusion was very good 
and i don't know why they have mentioned this a limitation this is not a limitation in overall in the study basically the heterogeneity is very less and we can actually definitely extrapolate the results what they have found it okay so these are the points i just wanted to highlight from the uh from the study so if any questions are there then yeah so any points thing, uh, yeah yeah please so one thing i wanted to ask for different outcomes uh, in a uh, meta analysis can different number of studies be chosen out of the total that have been selected because for every each outcome i saw that for parastomal hernia the total number of patients that they've included is say around 700 but for prolapse that is just around 60 and like that for each one it is different see when we include the studies they are targeted with the uh, uh, targeted towards the primary outcome so when we see the primary outcome in this particular uh, publication is parastomal hernia that is why 10 studies are there but when it comes to secondary outcome because it's a secondary outcome of the 10 studies whichever have given stoma necrosis or some other complications what they have studied they have included only those because if stoma necrosis is not given in other study you cannot include it that is how it can be definitely done but you cannot go outside the 10 studies to include it that is very necessary the rule of the rule of uh, meta analysis is the moment you have fixed the studies by prisma and at the bottom of prisma you have got the 10 studies everything all the results have to be based on the 10 from the 10 you see there stoma prolapse stoma prolapse they have included 1 2 3 4 4 studies are included because four studies only documented stoma prolapse documented means the information about stoma prolapse is available only in the four studies so they cannot use the other studies even if somebody else has given information if it is not adequate to be used for forest plot they will not use it that is how it is okay yeah. thank you sir any other question anybody would like to ask Dr. Bhavan, you'd like to add anything? Gautam, would like to add anything? Ah, uh, no, sir. I just want to add and ask you. Uh, uh, whenever I square is less than twenty-five, some meta-analysis include that they use fixed effect model, and more than twenty-five, they use random effect model. But uh, have you seen any studies with fixed effect model, particularly in RCTs? Uh, when we yeah, do yeah, meta-analysis yeah. of seen, RCT, uh, the, that is the only way said. I think we can use the fixed effect mo- model uh, yeah. better in yeah. better way. when meta analysis include only rc it is where i square are generally near to zero definitely i square it's actually the thing is it all depends on the inclusion of studies and what parameter you are studying if you have one or two parameters only and all the studies included have studied that parameter only you can use a common effect size effect size means basically the difference between the control and the intervention and the control so if you put the effect size fixed across all the studies and then calculate all the things it is called as fixed effect models but it is very difficult because when you see people are doing studies in different countries the population is different everything is different and I, even the procedures cannot be absolutely identical so that is why to overall overcome that thing people use random effects model rather than a fixed effect model. that is the principal difference but some some meta analysis i have seen they have used a fixed effect model they will use right. it a uh, difference Sir. between systematic review and meta analysis okay systematic review will not have for a spot systematic review will you will take now this suppose this particular uh, publication if i have to convert in a systematic review i will include those 10 studies there will be the prisma charting there and based on the results of the 10 studies i will just write my impression for four five pages or three four pages based on the results of those studies no calculation no statistics will be used when you use statistics on the published studies that is why it is called as meta analysis you are doing analysis after an analysis that is why it is called meta analysis systematic review and a general review general review will not have any uh, any outcome okay you will not have a research question general review means if you see a chapter in a book it is like a general review that is exactly a general review but in a journal usually people don't encourage general reviews nowadays they want at least a systematic review so that the review will address a research question without no statistics is used then that is systematic review if you add statistics statistics means for a spot if you add a for a spot it becomes a meta analysis no meta analysis will be there without for a spot 
Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And what is Cochrane review, sir? Cochrane review is basically there is a Cochrane database. Okay, Cochrane. Uh, it is started from UK. Okay, the person who started. It's a big group, and that is considered one of the uh, very good uh, uh, groups. What they started. uh they started assimilating the database like if you want to answer for this question so if they want to answer for this question they will do a big meta analysis and then they will have a cochrane database systematic review they will conduct that they will write to the authors if you if your trial is suppose included you will have a two month correspondence with the cochrane people it's like that so it the the results what you get from a cochrane database is very much in depth compared compared to this publication now this publication if i write a meta analysis i am not going to write to each and every author i will take the matter from the publications and do the meta analysis so meta analysis published in a in a journal has got a lesser value compared cochrane database does not publish in journals they have their own database and it will have a reference so that is how it is they will ask a top researcher they will ask him 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 or her to do a cochrane systematic review uh, research on a particular research question So if you have got lots of publication or something, you have written lots of meta analysis. They will invite you to do that, and they will give you three, four years to do that. It's like that. And then the output of that they will put in Co Cochrane uh, database. But routinely we use the journal uh, meta analysis, and that's good enough. Yeah, you were mentioning not about something. Actually, I saw the question, and that's why I answered that. Uh, no, no. I, I, I was just mentioning that uh, uh, sometimes we use uh, weighted mean difference, particularly in meta-analysis. And some studies, as the median uh, mentioned, median with range, some with with mean. So uh, they use uh, sometimes that uh, they divide range by six or four. So what is the best method to use here? No, I am not actually aware of uh, what, what which one is the better method. But overall, as I said. if you have anybody has to write a meta analysis anybody has to write a meta analysis anybody has done research in a particular area and gets a meta analysis always by invite systematic review always by invite you require a very good statistician who can actually compose good meta analysis for you so as a clinician i personally feel that you should know the principles of statistics rather than the in depth statistics right because how the calculations have to be done this you have to discuss with the statistician with a clear mind and leave it to that person to actually give you the results without a good statistical input you cannot create a forest plot and as you said if you take a meta analysis you have one flow chart and two or three or four forest plots and the meta analysis is out that's all and you have one funnel plot to assess the heterogeneity so only these figures will be there in a uh, meta analysis but meta analysis is something like uh, as i said uh, very few people actually uh get an invite to write and very few people actually uh, write it also it's like that because as i said if you have written 5 6 7 randomized control trials are good on a particular study then on a focus view then only there is a possibility that uh, in a good journal when i'm talking of the journal is not good anybody can write a meta analysis that's how it is any uh, right sir for the questions from anybody else So there are no further questions. Uh, we shall end the program, sir. Yeah, sure, sure, definitely. Thank you so much, sir, for uh, no, it was a uh, sitting through it patiently. And, you know, no, 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 not at all. The, absolutely not yeah, at all. Definitely, and I think she's done a good job because for a, it's not easy yeah. to uh, understand and uh, present the matter. As I said, it's the highest what, level of uh, evidence. Uh, what are you, Shobna? Uh, what are you doing? You are a general surgery postgraduate or? Yes, sir. General surgery postgraduate in Kolkata, PLS Hospitals. So D N B, second. D N B, very good. Yes, well done. Thank you. Sir. Thanks, thanks, Bhavin. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank thanks, you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. You should uh, Bhavin and Gautam. Come and uh, learn general surgery more often. Sure. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, sir.